I'm Dr. Robin Kostelitz, YouTube's post-traumatic parenting expert. Today we're going to talk about the origin story of post-traumatic parenting and why I became interested in this topic. Have you ever asked yourself, I wonder if my damage is damaging my children? Or maybe you're thinking, I am so depleted from recent traumas in my life that I have no psychological resources left for parenting. What's that going to do to my kids? Or even, how can I give my kids a normal childhood? I didn't experience one. Then you're in the right place. Welcome. Please click subscribe below so you don't miss, miss a single video. Today we're going to talk about the origin story of post-traumatic parenting and how I became involved in this research, started this community. Basically, post-traumatic parenting is the community that I always wanted but never knew I needed. So when I was a child, I was raised by older parents, which in some ways was wonderful because they had a lot of time and resources for me because they weren't young, just starting out in their careers, just starting out in life. But my father had a very serious heart condition that developed when I was about four, and he came near death many times in my childhood. My mom, who was a guidance counselor, was a wonderful parent was very anxious and consumed with caring for her critically ill husband. So my childhood was spent a lot of times in ambulances as my father was being rushed to the hospital. My mom didn't even have time to like arrange for someone to watch me. And because I was the only child at home, I would just come along with my parents. Although she was a very kind and caring parent, she was also a caregiver for a very ill spouse. So... I did not even realize that my childhood was unusual. It didn't occur to me that like other people have parents who are young and healthy, that other people aren't so careful to keep the home calm because, you know, my father did not handle stress well when he was very sick. So I felt that it was very important to be as quiet as possible, to make him as happy and proud as possible, to not make waves. So I would read a lot. I would spend a lot of time studying so that I could get really good grades. Um, I didn't know that other children don't feel that level of responsibility. And I want to say this and make this clear because a lot of times people talk about post-traumatic parenting and they worry that joining the community means that they're casting aspersions on their parents in some way. And some of us in the post-traumatic parenting community who were bullied, I was bullied, although not by my parents, are doing that, right? Sometimes the trauma of our childhood was our mother or our father, right? Sometimes, and sometimes not. Sometimes the most attentive and kind parents who are doing the best they can with the tools they have just don't have enough tools or are dealing with a very big crisis and a very big challenge, right? You can have parents who are living in poverty. You can have parents who are caregiving for elderly parents of their own. You can have parents who are preoccupied with something huge, like a pandemic, right? And they are trying to give their children as much as they can, but there's this giant trauma that's affecting all of them. If you think of it as like being in the same boat in a giant storm, so the family is in the same boat, but the boat is being rocked in the storm. This is not a pleasure yacht out for a fun cruise, right? So when you think about post-traumatic parenting, it doesn't necessarily mean that your parents were abusive. Many members of the post-traumatic parenting community did have abusive parents, and that's a certain form of post-traumatic parenting and a certain form of cycle breaking that we talk about. But a parent can be trying their best and still have a traumatized child. And if you are a parent with a traumatized child, know that although it's your responsibility, it isn't always your fault. So when I was in graduate school, I knew I wanted to work with trauma. I knew I wanted to work with kids who acted out. I knew that I wanted to understand child development. So I began studying and having kind of this unique 
path where on the one hand, I was learning how to treat trauma. I was a graduate student at NYU. On another hand, I was learning how to work with the most acting out, angry, defiant, disruptive kids as they were labeled back then um, in some of my internships and externships. And I was also working on a child development research project. So all of those interests were, you know, were they, they seemed very inconsistent with each other on the surface. And I remember feeling sometimes like a dilettante because some of my classmates were very clear about their career path and they were like really niching down and specializing in one very specific thing, like kids with OCD, like they really knew what they wanted to do. And I seemed to be all over the map. And then when I was on my doctoral internship at Trinitas Hospital in Elizabeth, I was teaching a parenting class. And this was a parenting class for parents who were court mandated to take the class for whatever reason. Either their kid had had a brush with the law or there was a custody dispute. There was a parenting dispute and they were mandated into this class. And I was teaching the class and it was a curriculum where, you know, sort of was given to me. And it was a, a basic curriculum. We were learning about attachment theory. We were learning about how children learn learn. We were learning about positive behavioral support, just kind of like standard parenting stuff that was really the standard back in the early 2000s. Um, some of it was very valuable information. Some of it is stuff we've rethought in psychology since. But on the whole, it was very basic stuff. And for some parents, some of it was very new, like even like understanding how to inject music into your voice when you're soothing a child or understanding what's a consequence versus a punishment and how to understand the difference between the two, why we want to emphasize attachment in our parenting, things like that. So at one point in the class, I'm giving my, I'm giving my class and I myself was a parent at the time. A mom raised her hand and she said to me, Dr. K, how can I give my kids a normal childhood if mine wasn't normal? And I remember having to sit down because the impact of the question hit me like a punch in the gut because I realized that it had been my question also. The woman who asked the question had come to this country as an immigrant, at a ve as, as a very young child, was, you know, got to this country through very traumatic events and then was living in poverty, separated from her family, working several jobs in order to like literally keep body and soul together. Um, she put herself through graduate school, became a very valued professional in her career. So she was really somebody impressive. But then she would look at her 11-year-old daughter and she would ask her 11-year-old daughter to do a chore, like, you know, clean up after yourself, you know, set the table, wash some dishes. And the 11-year-old would get really angry and be like, no one else's parents make me do, make them do this. You're so mean. And the mom wasn't sure, like, is this normal to ask of an 11 year old? Like when I was 11, I was waking up at the crack of dawn and scrubbing toilets and then work and then going to my shift in like a restaurant and then going to school and then coming home and then babysitting for somebody. I don't know what's normal. How am I supposed to know? You know, see, I think it's normal to ask an 11 year old to help set the table, but I don't know. So that was where her question was coming from. And I asked her and I asked everyone in the class, does anybody else have the same question? And every single hand in the class went up. And I was teaching a class to people who were from very different communities, socioeconomic statuses, places. They were just all very different. The only thing they had in common really is that they had kids and that they were mandated into this class. Every hand in the room went up. And my hand went up too. And I said, you know, that has been my question my whole life. I don't know what a normal childhood is. When I was 16, I did CPR on my father and he died. I don't know what 16 is. I don't know what a normal 16 year old, what to expect of a normal 16 year old, what's too much, what's too little. I don't know what a childhood where there's healthy parents, where there's normative demands on the child. I don't know what that looks like. I have no idea, right? And then I realized that my journey in NYU studying how to treat trauma studying child development and researching child development, which was my dissertation research and was something that I was very passionate about doing and working with kids who were displaying a lot of obvious signs of trauma, acting out, getting angry, being disruptive. It was all because I was trying to figure out that one central question. What's a normal childhood? How does trauma impact our childhood? After trauma, how do we parent? How do we reprogram that traumatic response in our brain to allow us to parent? 
What did trauma teach us that's a distortion that isn't true about the world that we now need to like relearn and re-understand? If I had insecure attachment, how do I provide secure attachment? If I felt pressured as a child, how do I raise kids who don't feel pressured? How does a parent repair with a child? Like there are so many questions that post-traumatic parents have. Is it okay for me to say no to my boss? How do I handle a demand from my child that seems excessive? What's a normal bedtime routine for a kid? And I realized that post-traumatic parents, we have these questions. And because we've experienced trauma, we tend to be hyper-independent. So we try to look for answers because I can do this. We tend to be perfectionists because trauma teaches us that mistakes are intolerable and will be punished. We tend to be very hard on ourselves and very self-critical, right? So then when we do make a mistake in our parenting, and inevitably we're going to because we're human, we take that mistake very seriously. It really bothers us. We get really upset with ourselves. We think it's over and we've ruined our kid's childhood forever. We're always second guessing ourselves. What's normal? What's not normal? What is the kind of childhood I want to provide? When my 11-year-old doesn't want to do a chore, is that a normal reaction? How should I respond to it? How many books is it normal to read at bedtime? What's a bedtime routine supposed to look like? What kind of games and toys should I play with my kids? Is screen time okay? Am I feeding them healthy food? These are all the questions that when a normative childhood was modeled to us, when we've seen it done, when we've lived it, the template is kind of pre-installed. And it's like, oh, I'll do exactly what my parents did. You know, we're going to have Taco Tuesdays and I'm going to read two bedtime stories before bed. And when my kid pushes back on chores, I'm going to say that's a normal chore and you're going to do it, right? Like those are just things I might validate and say, oh, I, I get that it's a little frustrating and setting the tables a pretty typical thing that 11 year olds are asked to do. So I'm going to ask you to do it, right? And we, we might handle it like that. But because the template's pre-installed, a parent who didn't experience trauma doesn't have that level of self-doubt and that level of effortful control. I'm pushing through. I'm pushing through. Each decision is not automatic. It takes so much energy to figure it out. I'm reading parenting book after parenting book after parenting book, and all it does is make me feel more shame and more guilt, and I know I'm doing it wrong, and I don't know how to do it right, and this is terrible. This is intolerable right? Because that's what it means to be a post-traumatic parent. And that's why I started this community, because it was the community I would have needed when I parented my oldest kids, right? It was the community I didn't even know I was looking for. And that's why I literally went through this graduate school journey, becoming a clinical child psychologist, studying child development, studying trauma, because I wanted to answer this one essential question. How does trauma reprogram our brain and how can we unprogram trauma so that we can focus on parenting in accordance with our values? So that was my origin story. I would love to know what's yours. How did you realize that you're a post-traumatic parent? How did you realize that your damage may be damaging your children? How did you realize that you wanted to be a cycle breaker and that you wanted to parent differently? Please comment below so that we can all hear and learn from each other. If you liked this content, please consider joining the post-traumatic parenting community. We hang out on Instagram where you can join our subscription and you can also benefit from all the free content and all the discussions that we have around this topic. You can find the post-traumatic parenting podcasts wherever you get your podcasts. Please comment on this video below if you have something to share and I'd love to hear from you. Remember to share, subscribe, save, and comment so that you continue to receive this content. Till next time.